Hey everybody, hope you're having a great day. So today we're gonna to do another collaborative tutorial. I'm teaming up with my friend Alessandro Boncio over at renderking.it, and we're gonna be talking about looping animations today. Now there's two different kinds of looping. One is having your object loop multiple times inside a longer timeline. So I'm gonna show you how to do that really quick. So let's go ahead and throw down a keyframe for rotation here and go to 30 frames down. And under the heading, you can see this is gonna twist it this way. Let's just go to plus 360 and let's put down another keyframe. And that's just gonna have this object spin one time. And you can see that it's doing an easy ease. We definitely don't want that. So we're gonna highlight our keyframes and we're gonna click this button right here, which changes them to linear. And that way they're not gonna have any acceleration, deceleration, it'll just be a linear keyframe. So we have a nice rotation. And let's go to our timeline here. So you can hit Shift F3 or click on this button. And if we click on this null that has our object, you'll notice over here we have a bunch of properties. So what we can do is check into this before and after, and these are set to constant, but we can change constant to repeat, and that's how we're gonna get our looping. So you can't see it right here, but if we change to our F curve mode, if we switch that on, you can see that now we have this sort of ghosted image over here, which is our repetition. And we are repeating one time. So if we hit play, you can see that we are going to loop once and then it's going to loop again. So that's the one repetition. So if we increase the repetitions, you can see in our sheet right here, you can see all those ghosted repetitions here. So this is a quick way to take something with two keyframes and just have it repeating. You can also do before if you want it to repeat before, and you can also do oscillate if you want to have it sort of ping pong in between the keyframes. So that's how you would have something loop in your scene if you have a longer render. But we're gonna focus mostly today on a really short render, something like 100 frames, something that you would post to Instagram and it would have a really seamless loop and only a small amount of frames to render. So that's what we're gonna focus on next. Let's go ahead and delete these rotation keyframes and we'll start here. So the first thing we're gonna think about when we're talking about looping animations is your timeline length. So we're gonna do 100 frames to keep things really simple. And the other thing that's really important is knowing your frame rate. So if you hit Control D, it's gonna bring up your project settings. The frames per second is really important. So I like to work in 25 frames per second just to keep everything very simple. So that means that in a 100 frame timeline, that's gonna be four seconds. And that's also gonna be very important with what I'm gonna show you next, and that is the vibrate tag. So one way that you can add animation is with the vibrate tag, but we need to make sure that it loops perfectly. And the way that we're gonna do that is by keeping an eye on the frames per second and the amount of frames in our timeline. So let's right click on our object, go to Cinema 4D Tags, and let's add a vibrate tag and let's enable the rotation. So let's actually take our timeline and make it 50 frames instead of 100. As long as you keep it a multiple of 25, that's great. So 25 frames, 50, 75, 100. So let's go ahead and play this and see what happens. Let's uh, increase the amplitude so we can see this a little better. So at the end of 50 frames, we have a jump. So this is not a loop. So we have to figure out a way to make this loop. And this regular pulse is the way that we're gonna do that. So by checking this on, you're going to be able to uh, control when this animation loops. And because we set this up with a multiple of 25 and having 25 frames per second, these frequencies, this ends up being one second. So this is gonna loop twice through this rotation in 50 frames. I hope that makes sense. So if we play this through, you can see that there's one little hiccup, but it's basically looping. So the little hiccup is that the last frame and the first frame are exactly the same. So you can either render this out and then cut out that last frame in After Effects, or you could just render out 49 frames. So that way the first and the last uh, frame are not repeating. And now if you play it, you're gonna get a perfect loop here. So that's how you would harness the vibrate tag. So just to illustrate my point, if we change the frequency to something that was not a perfect multiple, say 1.3 or something like that, now it's not going to loop and you can see that there's a little hiccup. So you really have to pay attention to um, kind of making sure the math works together so that these are whole numbers, your uh, frames per second corresponds to your timeline and all that sort of stuff. This is the exact same way that you would add camera shakes. So if we wanted to have a camera, we could add a vibrate tag to that. And all we have to do is make sure we have that regular pulse checked on. So for instance, if we had position, and we hit play. Right now it's not going to work. You're gonna get a little bit of a wiggle and then there's gonna be a jump at the end. Let's actually kick that up. So you can see there's a little hiccup at the end. 
if we check on regular pulse, we're gonna get a little bit of a different animation, but we can dial that down. And now we're getting a perfect loop. So the vibrate tag is perfect if you set it up with regular pulse, and that's gonna give you some really great animation. A couple things to keep in mind, make sure your timeline is the proper frames per second and length, and make sure you're not rendering that last frame. And then also, if you do any keyframe animation, make sure that you don't use easy ease. That'll kind of break the illusion of the loop, but make sure that your keyframes are linear so it's all smooth. All right, so if we're not gonna be using the vibrate tag or keyframes, but we wanna use noise and figure out how to loop that, let's go ahead and jump into this displacer that's inside the sphere. Actually, this is a new project, so we have to make sure that it's set up properly. Let's hit Control D. Make sure to change that frames per second to 25, and then change your timeline to 50 so everything is running properly. In that displacer, let's go to the shader and let's add a noise. And inside the noise, we can add a animation speed. So let's kick that up and see what this looks like. Let's go to this sphere and probably put this in a subdivision surface. All right, let's hit play and see what it does at the end. So you can see that there is a big glitch at the end. It kind of pops. So this is definitely not looping correctly. And the way that we're gonna get this to loop is under this loop period slot right here. So this zero corresponds to seconds. So if we turn this to one, that means it's gonna loop every one seconds, which is actually fine because we have a timeline of 50 frames and it's 25 frames per second. So that means that this animation is exactly two seconds. So that means a loop period of one will be fine because it'll loop halfway through at 25 frames and then it'll loop perfectly at the end. So that will actually work because all the math is really even and it's kind of a round number, everything's working perfectly. Now, like we mentioned before, the last frame, this one, and then the first frame are going to be the same. So we need to make sure we render out only 49. So if we're gonna render out 49, this is what it'll look like. Everything's looping just perfectly, which is great. So now as long as we keep this loop period to one or two, so now it's gonna loop once per this two second animation. That looks perfect. So I hope that makes sense, the loop period and the timeline and the frame rate, everything kind of working together to make sure the math works. Just to kind of illustrate my point, if we change this to a random number like uh, 1.3, you can see that at the end we have that hiccup. That's because we broke the math and it no longer works. We're actually gonna have a second tutorial coming up with even more tips and tricks on looping animations and some other scenarios you might find yourself in. Until then, I hope you guys found this useful. Make sure to check out Alessandro Boncio over at renderking.it and we'll talk to you next time. Ciao.